Welcome to the SEC Unfiltered Platform. I'm your host from Mock 10 Sports, Dave Shoemate. Here to give you the reaction, John Calipari heading to Arkansas, heading within the conference to go be the head hog, to go be the head hog. Kentucky's probably, if you're a Kentucky fan, AD, you kind of got out of that $33 million buyout that inevitably was going to happen. I mean, are we surprised? Maybe him going to Arkansas? Yeah. Him leaving? No. I mean, I heard his name. I think he put feelers out for the Ohio State job, if we're being honest. I think he put feelers out for there. The timing didn't work out. And in a lot of these situations in coaching changes, you'd be baffled names that their agents or the per- the coach themselves got on with the po- with other ADs. And just the timing hadn't worked out for the job. It'd be, ama- it'd be amazing. It'd baffle you. But, but Cal... Heading to Fayetteville, I think he's always liked the place. So that, that's not really that shocking. Again, Ohio State, if you were thinking about leaving Ohio State for Kentucky, you'd certainly leave for Arkansas. I just think um, I heard he's close to the Tyson, uh, big Tyson booster, Tyson's chicken that gives a lot of money to, uh, to Arkansas. So I think he's going to have um, – I think he's going to have a plethora of uh, NIO war chest. I, I think – Honestly, I don't dislike the high. I'm not a big Cal guy anymore. I think he's totally underachieved. There's no denying that. But I think here for Arkansas, you could have done worse. I think you can get a little bit of a rejuvenated Cal, a little bit, a little bit more edgy Cal back. Um, I'm not saying he's going to go win a national championship or even an SEC championship. I just think at that point, on after going through the weekend, Hunter Yurchuk missing on Chris Beard, um, it looking like Chris Jans was getting into it. Arkansas's Arkansas Little Rocks coach was getting into it. And I'm sure those were just, just some names thrown out there. And then you pull John Calipari out of your back pocket. He has some flaws, but to be fair to Hunter Yurchik, he may not completely made up because I think you just totally whiffing on the three or nine compete clause for Chris Beard to hire him, I think was a total mistake. But again, you somewhat redeemed yourself. You somewhat redeemed yourself. I think. It's a solid hire from where you're at right there. So if you're an Arkansas fan, you're kind of like, oh, we saw this guy a lot. I thought he underachieved a little bit. But, you know, after us fumbling Chris Beard, I, I thought we were then, then waking up on Sunday morning to Chris Jans, who I think is an awesome basketball coach. But if I'm an Arkansas fan, I'm not fired up. I'm getting Mississippi State's coach. I, I'm just not. I think you could go do better. But if you're an Arkansas fan, you're a little bit like, huh, huh, hmm. It got better. But I did as good as we could do after losing our first candidate. So, Apparently, I always heard he liked the Northwest Arkansas area. I think he's going to have, like I mentioned, a plethora of um, a big NIL war chest, I should put it. Um, yeah, I, I think Cal's going to do okay there. I think he's going to do okay there. I mean, I don't know if he even match Eric Musselman. I mean, Musselman went to three straight sweet 16s, two elite eights, as you Arkansas fans know. So, just initial reaction, sleeping on it. I think it's a fine hire. And I'm, I, I've been a critic of Cal the past couple weeks after the loss to Oakland in the first round of the NCAA tournament this year. I, I thought he got out coached. I uh, looked at they took they didn't even go through a scouting report. I, I, I mean that's a conversation you can go back and watch my Kentucky reaction video after that one. But I think this specifically in the situation they were in, I don't think I think it could have been worse. It could have been worse. It's just kind of a perfect marriage for perfect timing. Because because for the Kentucky Cow situation, it was kind of like a relationship that has run its course. It had, it had run its course. It just was. It just is what it is. It was what it was. Last year, people – I mean, going into next year, people weren't going to be fired up. Can you imagine Kentucky's midnight madness with him next year? It's like, you're a – we got all these great high school players, these McDonald's All-Americans. We're going to score a bunch of points. We're not going to be able to defend. Let's see what we do in the tournament. Can we even get past the first weekend? It was going to be like that. Let's bring some new energy uh, rejuvenation within the program. This job hadn't been open since, what, 2010? It wasn't it? After they fired Billy G, I mean, this is this is 2010, Cal's first year with John Wan, Demarcus Cousins. This job hadn't been open. And again, we're playing a national championship game tonight. This isn't even the biggest, and that's not even the biggest story. I mean, we got we got ED versus UConn. I mean, we got the biggest job in a top three college basketball job here, if not the most prolific college basketball job. It's open. It hadn't been open since 2010 when they hired Cal. It, 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 so if you're Kentucky, if you feel a little rejuvenated, you got out of paying the buyout. It's a win-win for both parties, in my opinion. It's a win-win for both parties. I don't think either party could draw on it up either better. Now, Kentucky gets to go to the drawing board a little bit. Gets to go to the drawing board a little bit. And again, they don't have to pay $33 million anymore. So that 
kind of lets them maneuver a little bit. So if I'm them, I'm going – Dan Hurley's going to get a call, UConn's coach for people who don't know. He's definitely going to get a call for sure. Will he be interested? I don't know. And, again, I'm not going to do make this a massive – who's Kentucky go higher video. We'll do another one on that, but just briefly going through it. UConn's coach going for his second national title at night against um, uh, Purdue. He's in the Big East, though, with the landscape of college basketball sh- shifting. The money's going to be in the Big Ten SEC, and Kentucky's Kentucky. He would answer, I think, if Mitch Barnhart called, or he would – that would be very smart of him if he didn't at least listen. Now, it'll be interesting to see how tonight affects that. Would it be easier for him to leave if they drop it tonight and not go back-to-back, or will it – could it be a little harder to leave if he goes back to back? I don't really get into that. I saw some people talking about that. I just wanted to bring that up. But I think he's got a way. Like, man, where's UConn? Where's the University of Connecticut going to be at in this college football conference landscaping shift? And again, I understand college basketball is different. It's not football, but still, I think it's something he'd have to consider. And it's Kentucky at the end of the day. It's not like Texas A&M's calling the guy, and it's just an SEC job. This is Kentucky in the SEC in an ever-changing college football, a college athletics landscape, I should say, led, led by college football. And the two big powers are going to be the Big Ten and the SEC. I think it's something to think about. Uh, Nate Oates, I think he's going to be on it. He's got an $18 million buyout. But I think Kentucky getting out of that, not having to pay the $33 million to get Cal out because Arkansas took him off their hand, I think that helps. I think Nate Oates would listen. Seems pretty happy, though. Just renegotiated a contract right before the SEC tournament. Got a daughter in Tuscaloosa at school. I know that doesn't mean anything. She could transfer to Kentucky. But, again, I think college basketball is a little different where you can you can win in a lot more different – you can win in a lot of different schools in college basketball, a national championship, get to a Final Four than you can in college basketball. Like, let's just do vice versa, Alabama versus Kentucky in football. Kentucky can't win a national championship in football is what it is. Sorry, Kentucky fans. Uh, Alabama can win a national championship in basketball. That, that's kind of where I'm at a little bit from that standpoint. Seems comfortable. Uh, they've supported him through and through in every situation, him and Greg Berner type. If everybody I talk to is close to the guy, again, this is before the Kentucky job came open, bear, bearing here. Uh, he seems pretty content in his situation. I think he likes his situation. But, again, I think he would pick up the phone and listen. Again, would be naive, kind of dumb not to. But I think he's comfortable in his situation. A lot of people are going to throw that out there. A lot of Kentucky fans, a lot of Kentucky beat writers like that. I think it would be a phenomenal hire from Kentucky. Young guy, NBA style, NBA pipeline, puts guys in the NBA all um, every year. Um, I think he did his best coaching job all year this year, getting this team to the Final Four, probably his third worst team in his five years. But, again, yeah, Nate Oates, I think you got to give him a call. Then Scott Drew, Baylor's head coach, I think his buyout's only $5 million, won a national championship in Baylor, at Baylor in 2020, 2021. I think he's close to Mitch Barnhart. Remember, Mitch Barnhart's the AD, and I'm sure, obviously, some of these Kentucky big boosters are going to have a say in this as well because they've had an opening since 2010. They don't have to pay the $33 million buyout. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people probably putting a little Irish cream in their coffee today in Lexington. But I'm telling you, it's a win-win for both parties, in, in my opinion. And Kentucky's got to be sitting there like, this is awesome. This is awesome. But Scott Drew, I think he's close to Mitch Barnhart. Mitch Barnhart's a very – he's not going to go take a chance on a guy with a lot of off-the-court stuff. Like, I don't know Chris Beard. I don't know if he goes after Chris Beard with all the off-the-court stuff. I think he'd be a phenomenal hire. You know, I always say Chris Beard's a top-five coach in college basketball. But, again, like, he's not – I don't know if he's going to go venture in those waters. That's what I'm kind of saying. Um, Scott Drew, it's always been the guy. It seems like he really wants to go higher. But like I said, college basketball is different. You can win a national championship at a lot of different schools. He won one at Baylor. He won one at Baylor. Like I said, uh, Baylor's not going to win a national championship in football. They're not. But in basketball, they certainly can. That's why everybody throwing these like, oh, why would he? Well, he definitely leave for Kentucky. Yeah, you're right. Kentucky's 100% better than every job in the country, minus probably two or three. But basketball is a little different because I think these guys get comfortable. They like their family situation. And in a lot of different places, you can win big in college basketball just as much as you can at Kentucky. Um, and then Billy Donovan. I think Billy Donovan's another name you got to keep an eye on. I, I, I really do. I, I think Billy D is the guy we're all familiar with, it. current uh, Chicago Bulls coach. I think you, I think uh, we all remember him from the SEC. Uh, I, it would just be – it would be interesting. I'd have to go really look into the details of his contract. I'm trying to look at it right now. Uh, but, no, I think Billy Donovan would be a guy you'd have to go talk to in this job as well. I mean, it's always kind of been their golden goose. Kentucky's always kind of talked about bringing him back ever since he's left Florida. Um, that would be a sour thing for Florida fans now just thinking about it. But, again, I think he'd be a phenomenal hire. 
he's going to be he'd be a phenomenal hire. He'd probably have to go over a few more hurdles than the other three or other two, I should say. Uh, probably the top two guys with the hurdles would be Dan Hurley and Billy Donovan, I think. Um, but I mean, you have to give Billy the kid a call, right? You'd have to. I mean, I, I mean I, at least I think so. And then after that, you get in. I mean, Jay Wright's doing the TV thing with CBS, TBS, TNT. With, he was with the tournament. Phenomenal coach from Villanova. We all remember him. He's won a national championship. Does he want to get back into the thick of things? I mean, Kentucky's not for the faint of heart. Does he want to get back into that, or does he enjoy his TV deal? And then I think you potentially got like T.J. Otzelberger from Iowa State, young guy, comes up too. I think it's another guy that would be a solid hire for Mitch Barnhart. So those are kind of the guys, the six guys that come to mind. If I was leaning right now, I think you got to give Dan Hurley a call. I think he's going to pick up and listen just because I talked just talked about that. Why changing landscape, more money? It's Kentucky. It's a better job than UConn. I know he could potentially win back to back tonight, but still. But the guy I think they're really going to lock in on initially, and I think Mitch Barnhart likes a lot, is Scott Drew from Baylor. That's right now as we stand on Monday morning. This would be who I would think they would lock in on. But things can change, and I'll keep you up to date on it. But I just wanted to give you just a quick reaction. But I think initially it's just a win win for both. I mean, especially comparing where your Hunter Yurchek and Arkansas were on Friday afternoon, Saturday, and even Sunday morning when you saw some of the names after after messing up the Chris Beard situation. I think this is about as good as you could have done. I think it's about as good as you could have done. I, I think Cal's going to be a little bit rejuvenated. It's like I think Matt Jones said it from KSR. He's like, he's going to be that girl in, in, a, in the middle of a divorce, an ex-wife, that's, hey, she's going to go get her edge back a little bit. Again, I'm not going to say completely. He's getting a little bit up there in age. But she's going to go work out, get in Pilates class, get in shape. And you're going to see her at one of the divorce places. Like, hey, she's kind of got her vibe back. She's got her groove back. Look at her. She looks a little fresh, a little bit more comfortable. She's been working out. Look, man, she, she's lost a lot of weight. Man, she's looking pretty good. I can see that being Cal at Arkansas because I think the big donor collective people are going to like him like, like where I think that relationship was rubbed wrong with Musk towards the end. I think he's close with the Tyson chicken people. I think he'll be good in the community. So I think this will be a rejuvenating fresh start for uh Cal. I think he's going to do solid at Kentucky. No promise or at Arkansas. There's no promises from a conference or NCAA championship standpoint. But again, I think it's from where you were this past weekend. This is where good as you could have been. And for Kentucky, you didn't have to pay the $33 million buyout, $34 million buyout, buyout whatever it is off the top of my head. And you got, Six phenomenal candidates you could probably get. It shouldn't go really past your top. I mean, Dan Hurley, like I said, Billy Donovan, Nate Oates, um, Scott Drew, Jay Wright, TJ Otzelberger. If you get past that, I'd be shocked. It probably shouldn't get past the top four. So just giving you the initial reaction, win-win for both teams. This will be exciting. I mean, this is crazy. Kentucky's basketball job has not been open since the beginning of 2010 when Cal took over. That is wild to think about that is wild to think about here i mean guy it's actually it's actually pretty crazy john cal to really sit here and think about john calipari is gone from kentucky hey, the way this kind of just all went down man but it, that's crazy it's why we love the, the college college athletics college basketball um but no i mean man this job has not been man this job has not been open since the yeah the 2009 2010 season. I was just that's what I was looking up. Sorry, I was just sitting here with the reactions back. Is it 10 or 9? 2009 2010 season uh, with John Wall and um, Demarcus Cousins and Eric Bledsoe and them. But man, what a time! Win win situation. Um, well, I'll keep you updated from where this coaching um, carousel goes for Kentucky. But again, Kentucky a top two three basketball job in the country, if not the best. This shouldn't take that long. The list shouldn't get further past the top three or four candidates. But I am Dave Shumate, your host here on the SEC Unfiltered platform. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for all the content. We'll keep you up on all the Kentucky basketball coaching candidate, the whole carousel of the Kentucky basketball um, candidate. And then also Arkansas, phenomenal job. Congratulations. you got a phenomenal coach. Did not think they were getting John Calipari heading into the weekend. But Hunter Yurchick and their staff, they rallied. They rallied and they got it done. I was critical, but I got to give him credit. He came back. And uh, turn some lemons into lemonade, I guess you'd say a little bit. But again, I appreciate you joining us. Keep joining us for all these segments. You have a phenomenal day.